Oh, God is good. God is good even on bad days. He is just good, good, good. And so we are so gracious to God today. Um, I get the distinct pleasure, uh, Bishop gave it to me, and I appreciate you, Bishop, uh, of introducing um, my best friend in the world. Uh, I've known this young man since he's been born. <laughs> I've been older than him. But I am so gracious uh, and, and excited that he's answered the call in his life. He told me some things uh, that we, as we talked and ministered to each other that I was just blessed by. But you have, must understand that God wants to do something special in his life. Yeah. We, we've had the pleasure of growing up in this amazing body and learning and growing. But I tell you, God wants to do something special. And so I am so excited to introduce a man, a young man who uh, I know he talks what he walks about. Yes. I know this. Yes, sir. I, I want to introduce a man who, who takes care of his family and who does the things that God wants him to do. Yes, sir. He is a he is a man of God at home, at work, Listen. and on the street. Listen. Right. He he speaks. He witnesses, and, and his family will concur first that he's a man of God. Amen. There's no greater witness than your own family. And so I am so blessed and honored to introduce my friend, D. Well, I wasn't going to call. I was going to mess with him. I gave him a nickname when he was younger, and it caught on because... <laughs> One day, I give everybody a different just so you know. And so, to me, he's Minister Duck. But to you, he's Minister Daryl Anderson II. Please rise and give him a hand as he comes. Bring it through your Holy Spirit. God, decrease him and increase your Holy Spirit with him. God, you have given him the words, God. Now magnify him in the name of Jesus. Let the words that we hear today fall on good ground. So that it produces a hundredfold fruit in our lives. God, and as we hear this word today, let us never ever be the same again. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. 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 How about we give God a hand praise? Let's all, let's all give the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords a hand praise. Glory to God! I mean, ultimately, we end up in the hands of God. God is everything. My prayer, God, is that you will decrease me to nothing. Any plans that I had, any things that I was going to say, take them all away and allow only the things that you want said, said. Allow the word that goes forth to fall on good ground so that it can enhance your people and enrich your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. My friends, good morning. Good morning. Yeah. So, I like circular things. I like things that start in a place, they come back to a place, and it all makes sense once you get there. Uh, I'm also a teacher by gift, like that's the thing that I do. So if you don't mind today, have a little teaching session, is that all right? Yes it is. I wanna have a teaching session today, is that all right? Yes. All right, so, but before I start, I think the question I wanna ask you is uh, what type of seed are you, right? right. Okay. So it's important to realize that we are a thing, right? God made us something. There's something inside of you that he wants out. And it's around this shell of a person. But inside is the thing that he made, right? I need you to understand something very important that, you know, apple seeds don't produce weeds. Well, we are a fruit, right? So if you don't mind, I want to talk, tell you a story. I like stories. If the story bores you, just start throwing stuff at me. Say, man, get out of here, keep going. <laughs> so, I want to tell you a story about an acorn. 
right? So there was this acorn, a bunch of acorns on a tree, and it's fall time, so there's a lot of storms. Storms blowing through, and one really bad storm came. Blew the acorn off the tree, a bunch of acorns on the ground. So this one particular acorn, it's in the mud. A deer comes along, <clears throat> stomps that acorn in the mud, <clears throat> farther down here. So that acorn felt that. It's like, oh man, I wish I could be where the other acorns are. At least, at least my buddy over here, he fell on grass. Mm. This guy, he fell on just, he fell on a log. It seemed like it hurt, but it's not as bad as this deer smashing me into the dirt. This is terrible. But what that acorn didn't see while he was lower than the other acorns, what he didn't see was the mouse that came and picked up that acorn, took it away. He didn't see the squirrels that came and gathered the other acorns so that it could eat. See, that's the thing. When we're busy looking at what other people have going on, we're not realizing what God's doing for us. Right? So, back to the acorn. Because I'm gonna I'm gonna go off in a few tangents, y'all cats just pull me back. So that acorn was in the ground and it was dark and it was moist. I hate the word moist, which is why I used it. You say it in a microphone and it sounds even more disgusting. Moist. That's what it was in the ground. It was moist. And that acorn is saying, this is awful. But you know what that moist dirt was doing to the acorn? It was softening its shell. So, the season passed. It's winter time. Now it's cold. So the acorn is cold and it's wet. But that wetness and that moisture was softening the shell. So the next season comes. And the acorn could see daylight because the shell was soft enough to start breaking out. See, I was talking to a friend this week, and everything is always about God's time, isn't it? And if, if you can't see right now, I'm talking, I'm talking to all of you, not just the graduates. We're talking to the graduates, we're talking to those of you who are at work and have a task. We're talking, I'm talking to everybody here. So the shell started getting soft and the acorn, it seems like it, logic says, okay, now the acorn can sprout up because the shell's soft, it can go up, but it wasn't time to go up yet. It was time to root. So the acorn stretched down into the nourishment, spread out, started developing strong roots. Later on in that season, then it started sprouting up into the sunlight, once it reached above the ground and realized how small it really was. It said, oh, I'm here, I'm free, and it's looking around, it's like, oh man, everything else is taller than me. Everything else is bigger, this is crazy. So, seasons passed, the acorn didn't forget the nourishment, because that's how it was getting fed, so it continued to root as it grew up, but that takes energy. So it's rooting and growing at the same time, but there are other plants, like weeds, that just kind of root shallow, and they grow really big. Right. But what happened was, and like I said, I like circular things, another storm came. And we're seasons later, that second storm came, third storm, fourth storm. Things are falling aside, but that acorn that had planted itself in the soil stayed strong. And as it grew over the seasons, it became an oak tree. Huh. That oak tree produced more acorns. So the cycle could continue because it produced fruit, because it rooted so that it could be nourished. Yes, yes. Full circle. Everybody say full circle. Full circle. Our lives, our existences are to go full circle. Now, if you have your Bibles, which you should have your Bibles, or phone, or an app, turn to Romans chapter 4, verses 16 through 18. And while you're getting there, we'll talk about, uh, you've heard a lot, and there's some songs and different things that says, call those things that are not as though they were, right? It talks about that, call those things that are not as though they were, right? But what the Bible actually says about that is this. 
And I'm, I'm reading out of the King James Version. My, my father was really big on King James Version. He loved the King James Version. And that was his version of choice. There's, there's other versions that are fantastic. English Standard Version is really good if you guys don't know. And they take the original translations, do some cool things. But today we're going to come from King James. Therefore it is of faith that it might be by grace to the end. The promise might be sure to all the seed. Not to that only which is of the law, but to that which is of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. As it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations. Before him who he believed, even God, who quickeneth the dead and calleth those things which are not as though they were, who against hope believed in hope, that he might become the father of many nations according to that which was spoken so shall thy seed be. It says, who against hope believed in hope, right? So that's kind of talking about like faith being the substance of things, hope for in Hebrews, evidence of things not seen. It's saying that it's not us that calls things that are not as though they were. That is God that calls that thing that is not as though it were. Our job isn't to see the impossible thing, not hear from God and respond to it. Our job is to listen for God to tell us what that is and then believe him. It's not up to us to decide what we think. It is up to him to tell us what it is. Because him saying it makes that hope against hope. All right? We used to listen to a lot of gospel music in my house. There was a song in the 1800s. Uh, my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name, right? That sweetest frame is that thing that looks good. Oh, that's good. All right. I dare not trust the sweetest frame. Wholly lean on Jesus' name. See, what Paul is saying is that we need that against hope, believe in hope type of hope. Don't trust the things you see. You trust what God said to you. Right? Alright, everybody. Listen. Just, just so I know you with me, say I have hope. Because we have to have hope. Now, did all that to get to our core scripture. I'm trying to, I'm trying to make sure that, I, that I'm respecting everybody's time here. This core scripture is going to be Psalms 37, 23 through 26. It reads, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delighteth in his way. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down, for the Lord upholdeth him with his hand. I have been young, and now I am old, yet I have not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. He is ever merciful and lendeth, and his seed is blessed. Now, referring to the music, again, we had a ton of music in our house, and there were these artists, with Milton Brunson, Thomas Whitfield, you know, the Winans Commission, like we listen up. Now, how many of y'all with me with the music? Oh, yeah. Right, it was, like, that was, some, that was some music. That was, that was it. But the funny thing is, there's, like, half of you guys who are, like, I said some of those names, and you're like, yeah, yeah, that was my song, that was my, that was my artist. But the other half had no clue who I was talking about. See, the funny thing is, uh, those artists, as amazing as they were when we were listening to them, they ended up becoming dated. Like, if you listen to the songs now, like, I, I heard a remake. It's funny, we were riding in the car, and it was There Is No Way. That is a Milton Brunson song. Love that Milton Brunson song. Ricky Dillard redid the song. Amazing song, right? You go back and listen to the Bill Brunson song, and you can hear the difference in the production techniques and the crispness of the music, and then like the, the the pattern and the flow of how it was sung. It sounds dated. It's still amazing, but it's dated. But there's one thing about music, gospel music, especially the gospel music that I grew up on. It's a lot of scripture, yes. right? So I remember being a kid and we would be in church as pastor, bishop would take us to all these different places and we would sing and we would hear things and I, you know, I would know these verses and I wouldn't know where I knew them from. I would have no idea. 
And it was because I was listening to so much scripture. I had no idea how much scripture was getting put in me. What you're putting in you will come out. See, what you put in you ends up being that soil that we talked about. Again, I told you I like these circular things, so I'm going to refer back to things I'm talking about. But that dirt, that nourishment, that is where all these other things that you're putting in you, that's what ends up determining how deep your roots can go, right? So in that song, there was a, you know, uh, there was God's Got It. No one runs into this song, God's Got It. And that was the song that referred to the verse, you know, once was young, now I'm old, never seen the righteous forsaken, but a seed beg bread. The key words in that verse, you know, is like, it talks about good and righteous. God's version of good and righteous is the only part that matters. We can think that we're good, and that's a fantastic thing. How many of you guys saw Inside Out 2? Nobody. Oh, yeah, there's a few. There's a few. I won't spoil anything. I won't spoil anything. You guys should go see it. It's a very emotional movie. Bring some tissues. I didn't cry because, you know, I'm a big strong man. I didn't cry. I cry on the inside. I'm just crying right about here just real quick. But the one thing that isn't spoiling anything is it talks about, I'm trying not to spoil it. It talks about how you see yourself. What we're talking about here is see yourself how God sees you. Because how you see yourself can become jaded by all these little things that happen in your life that you store, right? Our key words here today is see. In that verse, the end of it says, and his seed is blessed. You gotta realize that you're his seed. Right? Okay, the Bible refers to seed so much in all the scriptures that are referenced. And that's because God is so good that he gives us natural examples of very spiritual things. Right? So, if we're talking about seed, the life cycle of a seed is this. There's a seed, shell, all that good stuff. There's that sprout. There's a small plant. And then there's an adult plant. Now, the funny part about this whole thing is we can break down the segments, each segment, and it will be a fantastic thing to talk about, but there is a very limited amount of time here, and I keep looking back at the clock and <laughs> trying to pace it out, but I don't want to hold you. The thing about this is, and the incredible meaning behind what a seed is, and we'll talk about just the beginning stage and the end stage, the seed, the adult plant, the seed contains every component necessary to become a sprout and to become everything else that it's supposed to be. But being that seed isn't good enough. Right? So, you guys have and I have these aspirations, these things. Like, I, when I go to work on Monday, there's stuff that I want to do. And I know that I have the ability to do these things. So I'm going to walk in the door and I'm going to say, okay, it's Monday, guys. Let's get it. We're going to do this and that. You guys just accomplished some amazing things getting through school. It's very difficult. I don't, it's so difficult, ask any adult in here if they want to do it again. No way. <laughs> I need you to realize how difficult the thing that you just did is. Matter of fact, give yourselves a hand. It's well deserved. Because again, I don't want to go back. I don't plan on going back. But that thing that you guys just did you didn't do by yourself, but the ability to do it was in you. Just needed some help. You needed that good dirt. You needed that rain. You needed that deer to step on you, push you down in the dirt. Like, you needed all of those things that seemed like they were difficulties, but those difficulties were actually building the person that you were supposed to be. Right? Those difficulties that built that person that you were supposed to be, also cause other people that you didn't see to look at you and look at you like they see the things that you went through and they say, huh, yes, yes. how in the world did this person get through? Yes. All of it? How did you get through those moments? It was in you. That's right, that's right. Ladies and gentlemen, it's in you. 
but you can't do it alone. Jesus. Having the ability in you isn't good enough. Yes. It doesn't mean there's a problem with having something inside of yourself. Yes. With having that dream, God put that in you. Yes. You're supposed to have that. Yes. But you're supposed to also be wise enough to understand that you need to go to him. Get that good dirt. Get that good water. Find the nourishment. Take the time to grow down first before you sprout up. See, that's how you can stand the storm. See, that storm was that first thing that knocked the acorn off the tree. Wasn't it? And that storm was also that thing that proved that acorn had grown into that tree. But the other trick is, the adult plant, it creates more fruit. So as we talk, and, and I know a lot of times, and matter of fact, Pastor Bishop have been really doing a fantastic job. We've been talking about uh, the fruit of the spirit. Actually ends up just being a part of what they've been talking about. It's been the common thread. Like, so it hasn't been necessarily like the main point, it's been a sub point. Uh, and it was funny when, when I was reading and God was giving me stuff, he brought me back to that same sub point. So if you've got a second, if you could turn to Galatians 5, 22, 23, say amen when you have it, because I think it's important that we see this all together. Nobody said amen. <laughs> <laughs> I say man when you have they're like nah <laughs> nah I ain't saying nothing I ain't saying nothing <laughs> Galatians chapter 5 verse 22 and 23 that's my people that's, there you are okay so I kind of want to read this together even though this usually turns out to be a disaster but we're going to give it a shot anyway is that alright everybody is alright say it's alright alright cool so Galatians 5 22 and 23 reads, but the fruit of the Spirit How many of you remember that as a Clark sister song? <laughs> Hands in the air. Okay, all right, all right. So, for those of you, <laughs> I should have just had I should have just had us recited by memory and you feel like the kids would be like, how in the world did they? Yeah, because again, it was a song. <laughs> now, before that section, it talks about, uh, it talks about the works of the flesh. Mm -hmm. And I'm very big on words. Again, my dad was very large on King James Version and on definitions. Anytime he spoke, he gave a definition first and then he would speak after that, right? I'm not gonna do that, but there's an important word in here. When it talks about the works of the flesh, the Bible says are. And it gives a litany of things that you shouldn't do and shouldn't be. Litany of things that if you see in a person, uh -huh. determine where they are. Yes, right. Ultimately, yes. and it's not me, I didn't say it. It's in, it's in the scripture, I didn't say it. I, Look, I'm not even going to read it. I'm not even talking about it. You guys want to know what it is? You look yourselves. I'm not doing it. That's not what we're here to do. That's not what we're here to do. But it does say the fruit of the Spirit is. is, is. So That's what does good. is That's mean? Good. Yes. I just want to stay here for a second. You know, is singular, right? So if we're talking about the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, uh -huh. and temperance. The fruit is all of those things. Uh -huh. Like, an apple tree doesn't produce oranges. Right? So we can't say, it's love, you pick love off the tree. Today I'm going to show love. Yeah. But I'm going to be really angry the whole day. I'm going to show you some love, but I might kick you. <laughs> That's not what the fruit of the Spirit is. But, I mean, it's... Because I'm running out of time. I got a clock. Somebody started the clock. I got to chill out. I got to chill out. But look, the fruit of the Spirit is 
all of these things. And it seems like a difficult thing until you consider the fact that you grew from a seed. That once you decided to take Christ, that is your fruit. He turned you into that seed. At maturity, you will then be able to show all of these things all at once. But it's at maturity. We can't talk about the stages. You don't see fruit coming from a sprout. You go outside right now and look at a young tree, you see nothing but leaves. And the leaves are important. And the leaves provide shelter for animals. And the leaves do all kinds of really fantastic things. They have a purpose. But it's not time for that tree to produce fruit yet. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. The question that I have is the same question I had in the beginning. What seed are you? Now, that can only be answered by you. I can't tell you what seed you are. That's on you, but I'm telling you what, it's never too late to begin. It's never too late to start. Going back to the secular world, there's a, there's a, there's a Olympic diver named uh, Krista Palmer. She was 20 when she started diving. She's in the Olympics. She's a bronze medal winner, bronze medalist. Can't speak. <laughs> She's a bronze medalist. She started at 20. Divers who get to that level start at 10. But it wasn't up to the old tropes of how things are supposed to go to determine what her destiny was. That was up to God. Right? So when he said, hey, this is the thing you're supposed to do, at 20, she said, okay, and she started doing it. My people, it's not about when. When is never the question. The question is whether or not God told you to do it. It's that hope against hope that we talked about. What seed are you? Another phrasing of that is what are you made for? If you're not sure, if you don't know, I'm telling you right now, it's not too late. You can come to Christ at any point, any moment, because he's waiting for you. Arms stretched wide. Nails in his hands. He wants you. That seed that we're talking about, we're not just talking about abilities. We're talking about your soul. We're talking about your influence on the world around you. Everyone stand. That seed that was planted in our heart comes from the word of God. The Bible said the word of God is that seed. And here's the word of God that